Hello and welcome to this video. We got to try today to stop the losing streak. So we're playing Alejandro. Um, and what should we do? Let's go with the Sicilian. And we have bishop c4. I normally answer e6 to play a quick d5 against this line, so we'll go with that. And then bishop d7 if he plays bishop b5. The bishop goes all the way back. Definitely not a good move. Um, I think bishop g4 should be good here, because now we can maybe get him to waste another move. Yeah, that's fine. Just put the knight there. Okay, queen um, blocks. Let's play queen e7. We'll recapture with the knight, I guess. Then we can keep our... Okay, so you mess up my pawns. I've got the two bishops. I'm happy with that. Now you pretty much have to exchange. So if knight here... Let's just think, does this make a difference? Knight here, then knight e5, then I can just move the bishop. So knight e5, I'm covering the c6 square, I can just move my bishop away. Something like bishop h5 looks good. And then in due course we'll play either rook c8 or just maybe f6 actually. Kick the knight, where's that knight going to? Yeah, I think f6 should be fine here. You kind of have to go d3. And then you hit c5, but when I move the knight, I'm covering that square. So I think knight f5 is good now. We're covering the c5 square. If you play h3 to play g4, okay, that's nice. Just come back to bishop f7. Got everything in good shape here. Now we've got bishop d6 coming with tempo. There's a check there. I think we can just pop our king on d7. I don't think he's in any danger there. We've got lots of pawn coverage as well. So bishop Bishop d7, b bishop d6 playing. Now we may as well get on this and just look at the knight anyway. Um, and then we're coming in with knight d4. Yeah, so knight d4 now looks kind of interesting. Let's play that. And then we've, we're hitting c2. Obviously knight a3 is the obvious way to defend against that. But then we have knight f3 check, which I've just seen. So this definitely doesn't work. So the question is, do we take the rook now with knight f3? Or do we play knight c2 and try and win this rook for free? And I think we should do that. Um, I think we should do that. And this looks like game over. So let's grab... Yeah, I mean we c which rook do we want to take here? We're going to go knight a3, then the knight moves. Um... We'll take this one. I mean, we're basically gonna we're gonna lose the we're gonna lose the knight here. But we can either choose now to yeah. You see, what I'm thinking is rook here. Let's play rook here. Rook's gonna take on a one. And now, after bishop takes here, we can occupy the second rank. Yeah. Okay. Good. So now rook take rook here, and I'm hitting b2. So after rook here, we can maybe play... Uh, we can't play rook here, because this is actually covered. So just nice and simple, we're going to play bishop g6, hitting d3. The d pawn can't move, because it's pinned to the rook. And I can't see an easy way to defend this pawn now. I can't see anywhere. And this knight has no squares. So we actually can just take this now. That doesn't help you, because now you now have a discovered check. Plus, we're hitting the rook. So this feels pretty nasty now. I think the main threat is rook takes b2 with check, winning the rook and a piece. So really, you have to move your king. Unless you can play something like rook here. Yeah, that definitely doesn't work, though, does it? Because we just take this with check, and I think this is yeah, this has just got to be over now. So now I think we have a choice between picking up this and being uh, and being what's our choice? We can be a whole rook up here, or we can just move our rook, and we're still a whole rook up. So I think we just move our rook, just remain a, a pawn up, and this rook is still kind of stuck here, it's still defending the b2 pawn. If rook comes to d1, we're just going to play c4 to cement the bishop, and then take yeah. So I think. We just play this, and if b2, now to undermine this defense, we can just play rook takes a2, hitting the knight. The knight has nowhere to go anyway. 
So let's be having that one. And our rook takes a2 is threatened. And we've also got moves like... Actually, no, this is the main threat now. Yeah, just forking these two guys here, and then any move, and then bishop takes the rook. And it really should be time for white to resign now. And he does. Okay, wonderful. Um, okay, so critical moment of the game seems to be... Um, Clearly this moment here, we're attacking c2, we're threatening um, the square. But actually looking at it again, we have this knight of three check. So actually once the knight gets here in this position, I think we're all we're already winning or close to winning. So let's see what black can, white can do better. This knight isn't unprotected is not protected yet. So actually maybe just playing, you know, playing c3 now, keep the knight out of d4. Nothing's really concretely threatened, and I think black white should be okay. I mean, maybe black's better because he has the two bishops, more central pawns, open files, and better development. Okay, maybe significantly better, but okay, not not uh, not winning. So I think c3 here, or possibly bishop b3 was also fine. Uh, bishop b3 probably better actually, except no, bishop b3 doesn't work because then we have bishop takes. Bishop takes knight, and then we come into the square again. Except in this position, we've only got the one threat. We're not coming into f3 uh, and c2, because f3 is covered by the g2 pawn, because it hasn't moved in that line. And then, so then again, you can just play knight, knight a3 to stop c2. So I think that'll look like a better option. Okay, thanks for watching.